Hello everybody, welcome to a new discussion video, it's me Nolsey and this is a very 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 impromptu uh, discussion video, I'm not going to edit this, no idea how long it's going to be so all I'm going to suggest is if you're watching this, put the pop the kettle on, no, actually in a first, pause this video, pop the kettle on or get yourself a beer, get yourself a, a soft drink or something, I don't know, whatever it is you drink. Maybe a snack or two, a sandwich, I don't know. And then come back and sit down and then continue if you wish. So, as you can see by the title page, my friends, is I'm talking about animation again. Now, I have kind of done topical videos a few times talking about my love of animation and talking about different things. Uh, I remember a few years ago I did a video response to a guy called Saberspark. And Saberspark is a big YouTuber. He is a massive, massive enthusiast of all types of animation. And uh, he does some really great videos talking about some really bad animated films. Uh, and also some really good ones and kind of like, you know, he kind of does both sides of that. And I did a video responding to him a few years ago, which was, uh, if I can, if I can find it, if, uh, it is on my channel still, so if I can find it, I will uh, link it in the description below. So, this video was response was to him... Well, actually, it was my it was my own words, but the video Saber Spark actually made was about how people view other people that <clears throat> watch animated films and cartoons when they're adults, and he was kind of saying that, you know, along. Lo Long story short, you know, he was kind of talking about that it doesn't matter how old you are, these films are entertainment just like anything else. And also cartoons are the same thing. They are family entertainment, they fall under entertainment. It doesn't matter how old you are, you can, you are and still allowed to enjoy them. And he was kind of going to his own personal uh, experiences he's had from people in his life. <clears throat> of how he was treated and I did a response to that of my own of my own experiences and so that was one of them I've done in the past and also I think I've done another one talking about something else I can't quite remember what that was about but I have done at least two maybe three videos over time uh, about animation oh yeah that was right um that's it I think the other one was to do with adult animation uh, I did a video talking about Adult Swim, and it re it, Adult Swim has finally returned to UK TV on all four, Channel 4. Uh, on, yeah, all four. And, uh, yeah, that was actually quite interesting because it was bringing back Samurai Jack, Rick and Morty, uh, Robot Chicken, and a few other things that were, that were slated at the time. And um, obviously, uh, Adult Swim was a massive, massive in it part of my life when I was uh, in my teens. Because um, I remember Adult Swim used to be on a channel called Bravo on on Sky. Because um, after a certain time, I think it was about midnight, it changed over. And I used to watch that a lot. Uh, I used to really enjoy that. that uh, and obviously, Toonami. Uh, Toonami later on became part of Adult Swim. No, Adult Swim, Toonami was part of Cartoon Network, but then Adult Swim became its own thing in the end. So now Toonami is an Adult Swim thing now, but I'm still waiting for Toonami to be brought back to the UK. I want Toonami back. I know they've um, struck a deal with Crunchyroll, so you can actually view through Crunchyroll, but... I don't know what's going on with that, or if it's still happening, I don't know. But um, still, anyway, let me prog let me progress, and let's me get let me get to the point of today's video. So, I want to talk about traditional animated movies. What I mean by traditional is animated films, 
cartoons such as like Snow White, Seven Dwarfs, and that thing, where, that kind of thing, where it's sell animation, traditional animation, sell animation, uh, used with really clever trick like camera trickery where you know obviously it was all like te it was all like watercolored backgrounds usually highly detailed and then on top of that was a was um uh, on top of that they they also had really nicely painted uh like additional things that they would put on and and if you I don't know if anyone's not seen it but I um it went all up, it went on Facebook a few times and I have actually watched uh, a massive, like a, a few, uh, like, a, like a documentary or something of how they used to make the old Disney, Walt Disney movies with this whole cell thing. And they used this big, massive, massive contraption, which was a big camera, like a big camera. And the operator of the camera was at the very top. And this camera had like tiers, and you would slot in the cells. And it also had this ability to kind of zoom in as well. So it gave the effect like you were zooming in to something further away or what have you. Um, and uh, they used that through all of their cell animation up until they went fully CGI and um, so on. And I miss that type of animation. And the whole idea of this video is, is there... Is there now a resurgence of interest for cell animation? Bec why I say that is that there's a lot of independent work that has been recognised by people at, like Amazon Prime or mostly Netflix because there's a lot of different animation types on Netflix, you know, you've got stop motion stuff, I think. Yeah, you've got stop motion. You've got a lot of adult, adult-centred cartoons, which are hand-drawn, but obviously they're enhanced with digital techniques, which, you know, they are coloured digitally, so they look brighter. But they are drawn, hand-drawn characters uh, on a, di like a digitally enhanced back, backdrop and so on and so you know so it's all you know that's how it is now you know it, now it's all moved to as we all know um to digital so there's a lot of traditional animation still happening and traditional is what took that what took its place uh well traditional it was what came in that kind of uh <laughs> What am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say all this off the top of my head without having to edit, and I don't want to edit. But what I'm trying to say is, is that obviously we had cell animation, and traditional was kind of what replaced that, and then after, and then obviously now it's full CGI. So there's a lot of traditional animation, and if for those in layman terms, for those that do not understand a word I'm saying about what what the hell is traditional. Well, traditional means it uses cell original tradi uh, traditional methods such as cell animation, which is like using a animated character and then put it on a other but uh, on a backdrop. So it's basically kind of but it's doing it digitally. It's using digital methods. So it's all being storyboarded. It's all being uh, all the characters being designed and the backdrops being designed and and coloured and so on and so forth. Everything's been done digitally, digi digitally. But uh, obviously, instead of it all being put on little cells, which is which was kind of like a see-through kind of thing. I don't know, I can't remember what they call it, but they called it a cell anyway. And that's how what they did. They kind of put the character on top of a watercolour backdrop when it used to be cell animation, as you know. And that's how they kind of did it, and they kind of built up the set with that, like Walt Disney. That's what Walt Disney did with that camera, but that's what Walt Disney did. Obviously, other companies like Hanna Barbera and so on, they would have done other methods. They would have all done it hand drawn. They would have drawn each frame. They would have done it like stop motion. Anim uh, animation is done very, using stop motion techniques. Like Studio Ghibli, you know, they were doing it all traditionally. Uh, well, they were doing it traditionally using cell 
or using more of the method of like a stop motion method which was they were doing it in frames so like kind of like each movement was done like that you know and it was captured so and so forth and i think i can i don't really know the full detail but all i know is is that you know i don't know what the hell that was anyway but <laughs> but no you know what i mean uh, there's me there's other the, the, it's done in a way where you know walt disney they produced this massive big camera back in the day and that's how they made their big feature films but obviously at one point they did obviously have the method where they had no choice but to um do cartoons as like a stop motion thing they they all did it you you know they all did it like a stop motion way that's how it was all done but now obviously it's all digital digitally done obviously they will still have like what you call time stops where they kind of like you know where it's all done so it all goes together and it flows but um yeah again getting back on track um <laughs> God, I'm so freaking bad. We're trying to keep on track with things. I apologise for that. Um, but yeah, my point is to clear it up a little bit. I would love to see... Because obviously there is a big, big demand now. And there's a lot of... Tradigital animation. A lot. Which is using... Age-old techniques, but use but obviously they've been modernised using technology through computers, through what have you, and it's just a little bit the same when it comes to three D animation. They are using those methods, but it is a lot more a lot more technical because obviously they use models and they kind of scan it and that's how they use that's how they can get the circumference and get the character right and then obviously they've got to use mechanics so like make like a skeleton and then make like a mechanic so they can get motion out of fingers and hair and it is very very much more technical compared to what i would say drawing a character um much more technical um but yeah, I don't know. In my heart, I'm in my my heart and my head, whatever you want to call it, both things. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I would love to see a return for it. I don't know if there is like a, like I said at the beginning uh, earlier in the video, if there's a bit of a, an insurgence, a resurgence, resurgence, um, of want. Like I understand that kids today. Kids today won't understand what cell animation is unless somebody tells them about it. Um, the only people that will understand cell animation before it became tradigital and then 3D uh, will be people that probably, obviously, are still here, that probably grew up in the 60s, 70s and 80s, 90s, possibly early thousands. Because early thousands is when they started to transition a bit more, uh, and obviously Jap uh, e uh, Japanese animation was becoming very very popular, and it was starting to come over uh, with the thanks of Cartoon Network, Toonami, and uh, with a like obviously the movies like Ghost in the Shell and Akira, and a few others that really welcomed. That type of, of, of unique animation style um, that actually then brought that into it. So animation started to, to started to change a lot because obviously you started obviously Pokemon came in in the late nineties, uh, Digimon, uh, and then obviously Shaman King and all that stuff that was on Fox Kids and then on Jetix we got Sonic, uh, Sonic X, which obviously you know a Japanese character and video game character. Uh, so, you know, there was a massive infusion that was coming into it within the 90s, uh, possibly even in the 80s as well, because there was kind of like a, a very small subculture that was following anime uh, or Japanese animation, you know, in the 80s. Because uh, obviously Japanese animation, obviously, <laughs> it's been in production since the 50s. 
And I think the very first Japanese anime was a manga was Astro Boy. Please don't kill me if I'm wrong with that. I am getting Astro Boy for some reason. Um, but yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was. I could be wrong with that, but I think that was it. But no, um, you know, there was this transitional period and a lot of you know animation from France. You know, France. You know, they they were getting into the animation stuff like Code Lyoko which was obviously based on the Japanese look with the big eyes and that kind of thing. Uh, and then obviously, you know, it was it was becoming very thingy, you know, very big. You know, animation was changing at a astronomical pace, and it still is to this day. And there was a lot of influ influence being all about, and people feeling thinking, wow, this is awesome. And then, you know, changing... The face of animation was happening a lot. Uh, you know, you had, you know, obviously your, your Japanese mixing with Western, which is obviously like your Looney Tunes and your Hanna-Barbera stuff. And uh, and then obviously you've got like, like Samurai Jack as well, which was obviously a celebration of like Japanese kind of, the Japanese kind of thing. But obviously it, it was an American animated series. And then obviously you've got Avatar, The Last Airbender, that series as well, which was obviously a celebration of Japanese anime. It was essentially an American anime. Um, I don't really class it as an anime because it wasn't. I, 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 this is me. I have this thing. Is I don't see Jap I don't see Avatar: The Last Airbender as an anime. It's an animated series that was produced in America, but. I can also kind of see why some people see it as an anime because of how it's designed, how the characters are designed. They, they're they taking reference from Japanese media, obviously. But, um... Yeah, this video is going all over the place. I apologize. But, no. Uh, yeah, so my point is, to wrap it up, I would love... And I'm asking the question as well to other f enthusiasts and other people that enjoy cartoons and animated films, even now, as adults. Do you think there is room or space, and do you think there is a resurgence of some kind coming in to kind of like... Because like, like, like they say... Things come back around again. Every, every, there's always a... Something is in, then it's out. And then it kind of does a complete 360 and it's back in, in fashion again. It's kind of... It's like everything, you know. When something is is in fashion and then it's no longer in fashion and then it does a 360 and then all of a sudden people are buying that product again. It's like, you know, it's like... I remember micro scooters. I know this is going away from animation, but just using it as an example. Um, micro scooters. That's how I knew them, so called micro scooters. And I had one when I was a kid. And then they disappeared. No kid no kid wanted one. Um, if you if you was on one, you were seen as unpopular. Uh, and then there were kind of like skateboards and rollerblades. They started to take over and becoming much more popular. Than a micro scooter was, and obviously push bikes were more popular as well, always have been. Um, and then obviously they kind of like disappeared. And I used to have one, and then obviously they started to disappear. And I, and I don't know what happened to them. And then all of a sudden, micro scooters are back again. At you know they're back in fashion again. So it's kind of like everything, you know, things do kind of come around again. It's it's the way things are, you know. So it's like. Uh, is animation, is it starting to kind of do that 360? Are we starting to see a new dawn where where Disney started to see that, obviously, you know, people were going to gravitating towards Pixar animation when, obviously, Pixar were revolutionary with bringing 3D animation to the big screen as the way they did with Toy Story. And when they saw... How popular and how much money that, that movie generated. They wanted it. They wanted a part of that. 
Um, obviously, at the time when I think the first two Toy Story films, I don't think they were part of the Disney banner, if I remember rightly. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember what time they actually did merge. But there's a bit of a debate of when it actually di- when they actually did uh, become Disney Pixar. Uh, so you know, I can't quite remember now. But um, they did a number of movies before they became. You know, under the Disney banner, uh, or branded Disney, anyway. Um, so yeah, it's I I, I don't know I, I don't know if it's just me, but with like looking at like Netflix as as, an, as a source example, I have been absolutely wowed. Not you know, there's some stinkers on there, some stuff that I just can't. I, I like I just can't get into the new. Um, Oh, what is it? I can't remember the series now. Um, oh, fuck's sake. What series? Um, oh, I've forgotten it now. It doesn't matter. But no, um, there is a few things on there that I just can't get into. But for the most part, Voltron, the legendary Defender by DreamWorks, obviously... You know that that was that just absolutely wowed me. I f- just love that that series. So Voltron, the legendary defender. <coughs> um, you got some beautiful movies on there like um, Claws, which came out I think last year. Um, yeah. So that that the the movie where obviously that the start of of what would become Christmas, you know, that movie just the, the animation designs, character designs. <coughs> yeah, it was CGI, but it was, it was, it was different somehow. It, yeah, it was against. You know, it wasn't CGI, was it? Like, um, no. I think no, it was digital. Yeah, it was tr- tr- digital. Um. But no, like I was saying, you know, there's a mixture on there <coughs> of all sorts of animation. Japanese, um, American, and there's this mixture of 3D, 3D CGI, or CGI, digital, stop motion, and also there is a lot of hand-drawn animation. And... It's kind of like when I see proper C, uh, hand drawn. Yes, obviously it's gone other way of using a pen and pe- uh, pencil and paper. They're using a graphics tablet of some kind to draw the characters on instead. But the point I'm trying to make is, it's there, and I want a return of that type of animation. At Disney, at DreamWorks, or any other... Well, actually, no, DreamWorks have pride themselves on 3, 3D CG, so it wouldn't really... It wouldn't, CGI, it wouldn't really make sense. Um, but at the same time, it would be kind of interesting to see DreamWorks doing a fully uh, hand-drawn animated film rather than CGI. It would be interesting. It's not what they do, and you know, if you look at their past library, but still... Um, but no, I would love to see feature-length animated films using hand-drawn methods. Again, um, obviously, I understand that hand-drawn stuff is is still used. So obviously, they do it for the storyboarding, and obviously, character designs. But everything else is done by via the computer and so on, and it's all coloured via the computers. Um, but it's, I want hand drawn, and I miss traditional hand drawn animation. And I'm not the only one saying this. I'm not the only one. I know there is a lot of people out there that are even new generation of kids now that are slowly starting to be introduced through re releases. Of movies like films that are you know being re-released at the cinema, such as The Lion King, for example, 
the original, not the new one, because that's terrible. That's an ex that, you know, I am getting into that now, but um, the original Lion King traditional cell animation. That movie is oh, Jesus. This is scaring me for even saying it. Is a good twenty five years old now. Even maybe just a sh shy over that. And it's still stunning to this day. And that is just a shining example of true animation that exceeds time. It's timeless. It's a timeless classic, as well as a, a lot of other Disney animated films. You know, The Lion King, Tarzan, uh, Lady and the Tramp, Aladdin... Mulan, you know, all the cla um, uh, Snow White, Seven Dwarfs, Cinderella, whatever your preference is, but you know, all those films, they they you could see they put blood, sweat, and tears into those movies. Uh the you know Jungle Book and so on and so forth, Bambi and all them, you know, they put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into those into the production of those movies to the point where they almost bankrupt Disney. Uh, I know the Lion, uh, the Jungle Book, I believe, was the one where it, they literally it had to be a success. If not, Disney could have actually crumbled. Uh, I think that was the same with uh, Snow White because obviously Snow White: Seven Dwarfs was the first feature length film that they actually produced to, as a, as Walt Disney. Um, and then obviously the Jungle Book was a big big gamble for them as well. So. Um, yeah, it was like, you know, there, it, you know, there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of unsureness with Disney when they were producing movies. A bit of controversy here and there, but you know, that's, you know, but it's, it's one of those things is that I, I really do see something on the horizon where when I start seeing like Netflix. How influential Netflix is, and obviously kids are a lot of kids have Netflix. You know that their their parents have smart TVs. You know, or they have a PS4 or an Xbox, and they've got these apps on those services. And they are probably not the probably not everyone's watching the every kid's watching these things, but a good majority will be. And it's making me think is that they are seeing this hand-drawn method animation and they're probably only really used to seeing cgi in movies and so on yeah obviously there is still you know the true digital stuff which i'm talking about you know which is still on Cartoon network i'm not saying that's completely gone away it hasn't but my point is is that you know thank you to like services like netflix it is really bringing back the passion and look at uh, the finally made the stats the, the the sequel series to Jim Henson's uh, Dark Crystal. That was phenomenal. That series was phenomenal. That is again animation. It's imagination. They were using practical effects, puppets. It is still there. It's an it's an you know it's it's it is still in that same spectrum. It's still in that same thing. Um, and of course, they would have probably have used all sorts of different methods within that series. Um, so they're bringing back what people all over the you know people have said. All these people say, oh, "Stop motion's dead. There's not much need for it. There's not much interest." Obviously, there is. Um, yeah, but the problem is with, with stop motion, it takes a lot longer and it's the most hardest of all animated procedures. You know, it, it the amount of patience, the amount of time it goes into animating a stop, mo stop motion animated film um, is absolutely incredible. And I tip, tip I, you know, Tip my hat to anyone that works on those films, like with Laika anime. Um, is it Laika? Yeah, I think it's Laika. Yeah, um, that did. Um, 
oh fucking hell I'm bad with names today you know I am a massive fan of those films anyways and um, <laughs> but yeah it, I just absolutely love animation and I would love to see I know Disney will never ever ever go back to um, to that type of traditional method plus they probably can't now anyway because they shut down their original studios so they can't do it anymore um, so they've completely gone completely CGI so there's probably no way in hell it's ever going to come back through Disney anyway but you know there is a lot of independent animated animation studios that are working alongside the big the big guns and i'm just like i'm waiting for somebody out there to kind of break that divide and go against you know go against all these big wigs and big track big suits and ties that are saying no no this isn't in this is in that's out this is the new thing and i'm just like you know some of the stuff's decisions that i've seen that people seem to class as a good animation or good character designs. There is some shocking shit that kids are watching at the moment. And I look at it, I'm like, no wonder kids are fucked at the moment. Uh, you know, I mean, the only shining examples I can think of, and probably get a bit of slack for saying this, is My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. I quite enjoyed that series. Um, I love the animation style, very vibrant, and... I don't care whether you know, you know. It's it, I really enjoyed that series. Other people may vary, but I really enjoyed it, and I thought that was a shining example. Story and character designs and animation. There was a lot of love that went into that series, and so a lot of people have missed it because they strongly don't want to watch ponies, <laughs> anime, cartoon ponies. But okay, that's fine. Um. And then obviously there's other stuff as well that I think that Adventure Time and Regular Show, all those things, you know, Regular Show, look at that, that is that is a proper time capsule series that is using, that is bringing in 90s nostalgia, 80s, 90s nostalgia with like old, atar uh, old video games and... The way that it's it's just drawn, yeah, it's it's mental. But it, I love re regular show and I love Adventure Time. Um, it, Adventure Time grew on me when I first watched it. I felt like I was tripping on LSD. Uh, that is a true story, and I felt like I was, I just was like, what the hell? But it grew on me. Um, Jake, Jake the dog, uh, uh, no. Um, is it Jake the dog? No, it's Jake the human, isn't it? Um, the dog, anywhere. Um, John Dimaggio voices the, the 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 little weird dog that stretches a lot. Um, I absolutely love that character. Uh, <laughs> he's my favorite character. Um, but yeah, there is some shine. There is some good examples, but for the most part, there's some real bad stuff. You know, you see where they've chibified stuff and proportions are all over the place and there's no order to it anymore it's just like right okay kids don't want story and structured story anymore kids are you know get bored easy you know not all kids get bored easy i didn't you know when i was a kid i absolutely loved at cartoons that had layers to them that had character development actual proper dev development and you know they, there was like you know arcs you know not all kids are lazy and have very very short attention spans not all of them um and i don't mean any disrespect when i say that i'm just saying that you know some kids generally do turn off if it's something that's too in depth they want to go for something that's a bit more light-hearted that's fine totally fine you know, it's your own personal preference, I, I, as I keep saying. But um, for me, as a kid and as an adult, I've always been drawn to worlds, structured worlds, these really interesting characters, uh, really good character development. And you don't see much of that anymore. It's very rare that you do. And it's Netflix, for me, that are winning. They are winning it because... They are making animation that is 
that is really quite well done. You know, it's really well produced. Um, and, you know, their actual stuff that they actually do produce alongside other studios. And obviously they've got their Netflix original stuff for for anime, but obviously, come on now, Japan are obviously, you know, you know the Japanese animation studios, they're making that anime, but Netflix is helping them out with giving them the money to help produce them, which is good because that helps them a hell of a lot because they, they need the money. They really need the help to keep bringing back anime. Um, I am an absolute avid, um, I won't say I'm an ambassador, but I'm an avid person. What I always say is, is you need, they need support. And for a long time, they wasn't getting that support. Only in Japan was they getting the proper support outside that bracket. There wasn't. And Netflix coming in and, um, you know, signing deals with certain animation studios like, you know, and I'm really, really happy that they've done that because personally, it has saved a lot of animation studios, and we've seen some really awesome stuff. I, I have, anyways. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, there's, I can only see an up and up and up and up thing with animation as in general, Japanese, Western, what have you. Um, Netflix for me is just wink, wink. They they are they've got it. They understand, and this just been some beautiful, beautiful, be absolutely beautiful examples on there. Obviously, yeah, not everything's been perfect, but not you know you can't have hundred percent perfection. It's, there's no such thing. But um, but no, I've really enjoyed for what for the most part what I've seen on there, and I think that through the popularity and Netflix being one of the most popular apps, if not the most pop, not the most used app on the planet, um, it obviously speaks volumes. Obviously, there's demand, but otherwise they wouldn't be producing that kind of material because why they're losing, they're sinking money into it and losing it. They're not gaining anything. So there's obviously a demand and for the type of animation and they're going into different kind of they're going into different things. You know, they they're go that they really are going into the whole adult side of things, which is fantastic. I love I love adult based themed animation. Um but I also like seeing what they're doing now is where they're kind of bringing in structured stuff for kids as well like like it, like Voltron for instance I've already mentioned that Voltron Legendary Defender that is both good for teens like I would say from about 10, about 10 years old over I would say is probably what Voltron is probably aimed at um, but it's also really good it's just so good it's got a lot of themes in there that you know, is is good for kids to understand. You know, there's good messages in there. Um, we need more animation that feeds good positive energy and good messages to kids. Um, you know, be true to yourself. Have uh, you know, um, be true to yourself. You know, believe in yourself, etc. Um, you know. All the things that most parents tell you and teachers tell tell kids, but they just don't process it as much. But like you know, back when we were kids, back back in like the eighties stuff, nineties stuff, you know, a lot of, there's some stuff that didn't go into that kind of thing. But <coughs> but for the most part, there was a lot of um, shows I used to watch that had a lot of positive messages, and it stuck me, stuck with me all these years. Um, so yeah, that's the video, my god, 40 minutes long, um, fuck it, I'm just going to upload it as it is, I know people don't like long winded videos, but, um, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you got the gist of the video, what I'm trying to talk about, uh, I know Sammy probably skull grin, he probably might give this a watch, because I know, you know, he's very passionate with his animation and his artwork as well. And, um, but no, I really love animation, always will, 
I'm never going to grow out of it. I don't give a shit what some narrow-minded people think. That probably view post that I pull up. I don't give a crap. And I, I understand that there are a lot of people that follow me on social media and also on here, this channel, YouTube, and so on. Underst uh, many, many of them know me, and they also like the same things as I do. So, obviously, that's all cool, well and dandy. But, you know, there are some narrow-minded people that believe that cartoons are only for kids. And if you're over the age of 20 or 15, you know, 18... You should grow the hell up and get a job and leave all your childhood memories behind. I don't think that's a very good way to have a... You know, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, I think, for me, nostalgia's kept me on this planet. Being nostalgic and enjoying the good old times and revisiting stuff that I've always enjoyed from being a kid. Um, and so on. And even now, some new stuff that's coming out... I like I love I like I love to to watch this stuff because it it you know it it's an escapism for me and I I like to have I like to watch things that help me to escape what's going on in the world that's music is another thing I love my music and that's similar and but cartoons animated animation movies cartoons what have you that is also a really good medium for me too you know, be able to escape, and uh, yeah, uh, that's the video, so I hope you understood the old idea of it, it's been a bloody long one, uh, <laughs> but no, that is it, that is the video, I want proper animation come back, I'd love to see a resurgence, I don't know if there could be, thanks to Netflix, I think they're leading, you know, they're leading the way. I think to seeing some sort of resurgence where we might see what I would call a proper cartoon, proper animation, where it's gritty, character development, really bang on character designs, settings, so on, uh, writing as well, um, and. Maybe to see some proper, traditionally kind of done stuff, like properly drawn, hand-drawn stuff, rather than it all just being all tailored and, you know, obviously you can tell it's all been done via a computer or by, you know, by some sort of technology because so, it looks so polished. Um, but obviously those that understand animation will get what I, hopefully will get what I'm trying to say. But uh, yeah, so that's that. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I was very surprised. If you've watched right to the very end, I want you to... Just just as a little bit of a laugh, if you've watched this video right to the very end, right, because it were up to over 43 minutes, I want you to, to type in the comments this one word, okay? I want you to type... Animation. I want you to just type the word animation, nothing else, just the word animation, and that will then tell me you have watched this video from beginning to end. <laughs> because, yeah, uh, I'd be very surprised if anyone actually sits there for over 40 minutes watch, listening to me, watching me talk about things that I can't get out of my head. For, but no, it's in here, it's not coming out here properly. Um, but anyway. There we go. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye, people.